Alright, let's go. Hey. Yeah, how you doing? Very fine. Good, good, good. Traffic a lot? Oh, yeah, this is really fast. It's very, very fast. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Yeah, all right.
just as awkward as it looked. <laughs> well, uh, man, that, along with you guys, are a consistent reminder as to why I feel like my life has purpose. Um, Leaning into bodybuilding, I didn't realize that any of this would ever, ever be possible. And obviously with you know the support of people like yourself clear across the world, and obviously social media and this and that, and um, the benefits of being a champ, being able to have the resources to come out here, I was able to see something as majestic as this. Um, I'd definitely like to thank all of you guys. Um, it doesn't go unnoticed. I was just talking earlier on the cameras, basically saying that we had had a day off because um, we went to Melbourne, you know, for the Auto Classic. And normally we'd have like one or two days off. And we were like, you know what? Let's hop on a plane and go to Perth. You know, I heard there's some cool stuff there. I was here before. I think some of you guys may have seen me over in Perth a little while ago, but that was like a really short trip, so for some reason I ended up making a lot of short trips here. But instead of just sitting around in the hotel gathering rest before we go to India for the Body Power Expo, we're like, you know what, let's just make this about something bigger than even myself and just hang out with you guys and, and see something cool. This is awesome. This is something that I've never seen. I mean, the, the guy is supremely talented. Um, this. I don't know about you, this provides me a lot of added motivation. It shows you that dreams can come true. It shows you that with hard work and dedication, patience and the persistence to want to go after your goals and go through life's challenges that you can make anything possible. This, anytime I would see something like this, it just is reminding me that anything that I'm willing to strive for, I can do. And there's always someone watching. So when in life, you know, you'll be training in here, whether you are getting ready for a contest or just trying to lose weight. Some people may come in here and feel inadequate because maybe they don't look a certain way when they first walked in here. Some people may feel greatly intimidated. Someone's always watching you, not to always pick at you. Someone's watching you for motivation. Someone's being inspired by each and every one of you, and I can probably say with the group in here, you guys are very fit because you're actually feeding off each other's energy, which is fantastic. I just want to tell you to be encouraged. In life, a lot of people don't see that word very often. I want everybody to feel encouraged to do whatever it is that you want to do. You only have so much time to make things truly happen. You know, if I didn't listen to a couple buddies of mine that actually wanted me to get up on stage some little shoes, you know, I would have never been Mr. Lipkin. I would have never even tried it. If I would have never listened to myself and someone told me, no, that you're not going to win or you're not going to be successful at anything, and just say, you don't know my heart, you don't know my passion, you don't know my pride. If I gave up on those dreams, I would not be standing right here in Perth, Australia, for Christ's sake. A lot of people in the United States don't even have a passport. And the people that do, that's the 3%, to my knowledge, even use it. So for me, I'm actually able to do a lot through bodybuilding, through actually having the dedication, the hard work. I mean, we already know it takes a lot of hard work to do this stuff. But it's more about knowing inside that I'm willing to take that chance and go for it. You know, a lot of you guys are going to be having you know, different types of obstacles in life, through work, through school, through relationships. And it's going to be based on what you really want. Not what the person next to you wants, not what your parents want, what you really want. If you wake up in the mirror in the, in the mirror in the morning, you have to stare at yourself and ask yourself, can I get better? And am I going to really do it? Am I going to just truly say these cool words or write these cool quotes online on your social media to try to get other people motivated? No, you need to take your own advice. If you say that I want to kick the world's ass, that's what I said up there, I, I have no choice but to kick the world's ass. I, 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 what that means to me is that the world is against me. There's so much negativity sometimes. I have to be a positive light so that if I can do it, someone else that I don't know is going to be watching and they're going to say, you know what, he did it, 
I'm going to do it. And it feeds off of one another. You know, and then lastly, I kind of want to say uh, another word that I don't really talk about very often, but I think it's really true in sport, but also in life, is called stamina. Stamina is a word that is so underrated that it never gets discussed. And what I mean by that is, you can have peak performance, and everybody in this gym has probably had just an awesome day in the gym. And then maybe that next day or that next week, it didn't work out so good. It wasn't the exact same result. Stamina will have you be at this level every single time, no matter what obstacle they're in. See, we all have seen different sport athletes, you know, that have gone through being sick or being injured. And that was an opportunity for that person to be awesome, to be fantastic, to be extraordinary. Challenge yourself to be extraordinary. Challenge yourself to endure that pain and that struggle and say, you know what? It is what it is. I'm not going to complain about it. I don't have to talk about it all the time. I don't have to tell people how, oh my gosh, this hurts. Oh man, you know, I can't do it. And complain. There's really not much room for that. It's a distraction technique from your goals. You cannot waste time being distracted by the fog that the world throws stuff at you. You kind of have to just do this and just say, not today. Not for me. Maybe for him. Maybe for her. Maybe because they want to be average. I want to be awesome. I want to show my true gift. I want to be gifted. I want to be able to go out there no matter who's watching and be at my best. And when someone is watching, they can be encouraged. So I just want to tell you guys before I probably get mobbed <laughs> um, that I want you guys to train hard, train smart. You don't want anybody to get hurt, especially nowadays with all these camera calls. Someone's going to do it, a gym thing and, and do it sitting on the body or Instagram. And overall, just have fun. When I got into this sport, I saw people that were having fun. You know, when I see Arnold Schwarzenegger, I feel the guy, especially Schwarzenegger, he always made it look cool. He always made it look fun. He was always, you know, talking about working hard, you know, eating right, being motivated, having the guts to go do it. I'm kind of doing the same thing right now and telling you that have the guts to give it your best. Your best. I promise you, your best will always, always, always be good enough. But it has to be your best. It can't just be something that you say, oh, well, I gave it my all, you know. It's like, no, 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 no. When you go to bed at night and you're asking yourself, did I give it my everything? And there's a little bit like, well, I could have done it. Well, then you lost. Even if you won, you're still lost. Because one day someone else that's better than you is going to beat you really bad. Or life challenges is going to beat you really bad. But that's also a new opportunity to say, I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for that challenge. I'm going to meet it head on. I'm not going to throw the covers over my eyes and act like there's a boogeyman or something, you know, or being afraid of the dark. It's just some type of fear that you're putting in your face. Be fearless with your goal. Be fearless with your action. And at the same time, do it with a smile on your face. Because you've got to be having fun kicking some ass. You know, like you've got to be having fun doing what you want to do. When people see me competing and stuff, they kind of get confused. Oh, this guy's cocky and arrogant, this and that. No, man, I'm just having a blast. I, do you realize I, I'm living the dream? I travel the world. Yes, I'm tired. Yes, I'm fatigued. Then sometimes the food isn't always great. But look at that. That's because I didn't quit. You don't have someone do something like that. And your damn sure don't look like that. That could do look pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have that if you quit. It's impossible. If I quit, that wouldn't happen. If Frank didn't quit, it wouldn't happen. He's got it on the wall. If they quit, it would not happen. Do not quit on yourself. You want it bad enough, you do it. 
bottom line, be encouraged, have fun. And this, this is by far, we fly out in the morning at 6 in the morning. And I already had a friend from back in Denver already asked me, um, where are you going? I told him, and uh, I showed him a picture, and he goes, holy smokes, man, like, that is, that's you. And he remembers me from when I was, you know, a lot smaller, and, uh, you know, working two, three jobs, just trying to make the dream happen. I didn't have anything. And it's always cool to come full circle sometimes along that journey and be like, man, I didn't quit. But you know what this also tells me? Is that there's a damn reason why I didn't put up how many Mr. Olympias I got. <laughs> because I still got to be encouraged to do better than four, five, six, seven. I have to be because it's in my mind. But just because it's in my mind, my accent's got to speak a lot louder. So whether it is to get that job, get that promotion, get a few extra inches on the bicep, whatever it is, you got to be encouraged. you got to have fun. Is it a chore? To some. Some people, they treat that leg day like it's a day for opportunity. So then when they do wear shorts, it ain't looking like they're standing on the damn hands. <laughs> <laughs> looking like a chicken junk. <laughs> so, uh, wow. You guys are awesome. I just have to tell you that. I mean, this is really neat. Um, I'm just trying to take it all in. I think it's one thing to, to win the Olympia is awesome, to win it twice, three times, four times. I think right now in my career, I've committed to myself that in the year 2020, I will retire. So from here on out, I'm trying to see things and do things that are very purpose driven, that all have meaning, you know, meaningful things. And uh, stuff that I can remember when I go into the next phase of my life. And uh, for me, it's kind of hard even admitting like, wow, just after seeing, I mean, I saw Dexter Jackson with the Arnold in Columbus and in, in uh, Australia at the age of 45, and I'm like, I'm 35 years old. I don't know if I can compete in another 10 years. But you know what it did tell me is that if I'm encouraged enough, and I take care of my body, I might be able to, because he did. But I can tell you, I, I kind of want to start going fishing and stuff at the age of 40. So, and I know Perk has a amazing, you know, waters out here, but it's just that time in my life where I have to stop and kind of just basically inhale all of this. And um, just remind myself that when I'm getting ready for shows, when I'm getting hit with different personal issues or whatever, it matters, but it doesn't. It matters because it is emotional. It matters because I'm human. But if I can smile every day, even if I had to cry it out before I went to the gym or whatever, as long as I can walk out and feel like I accomplished something, I'm winning. Be a winner. Be a winner for you. I don't care what it is. Be a winner. When go out and accomplish something that is special that one day you can share a story with, a laugh, a cry, and talk about how you didn't give up. Whether it be for your kids, for your parents, for, for yourself, just to say, look, look where I came from and look where I am now. Because this journey is pretty awesome. Jesus, I can probably keep talking forever, but you know, I just uh, I guess I'll just close it again. I can tell when I close it with. I plan on coming back here for sure and um, making it a longer stay after just sharing some thoughts and perspectives with you guys. That, it sucks because this is the part of my job that does suck. 
because I kind of just want to hang out. And sometimes I go to places where I'm like, ah, you know, let's get the hell out of here, you know, let's, let's go get something to eat, you know? <laughs> Gotta eat, right? Yeah. <laughs> but out here, it just seems like ever since we landed, this is the first, second time I've been here, my crew and I, we just, we were all saying the same thing. Wow, this is Perth just beautiful. It's clean. Everybody's nice. We need to spend more time here. So maybe in maybe the next phase, you know, who knows? Maybe later this year, I don't know. Right. <laughs> I'll have to at some point for sure. Yeah, uh, we'll I'm sorry? We can pass the great. Yeah? I can get a weekend pass? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do I just point to that guy? <laughs> <laughs> what I would like to do, since I didn't really get to do this uh, yesterday, was answer some questions. If you guys have some questions, I mean, I can hear everybody, so it's not like we can't ask. But I'll probably take... Thirteen? Two questions. Some people will get that number. They'll understand why I said thirteen. Don't be bashful because the minute you guys stop talking, I'm out of here. So it's like, all right? So we got a question. It can be funny too, you know, like, it can, okay, okay. You guys can be real bad for that. You can be real shy. You're probably, you're probably, no. Um, you're probably wondering about the Olympia. Yeah. Probably worried about Jenny Stein. Probably worried about you know what I'm going to do for training this year. All this other stuff. Don't ask this stuff. I walk out the door. That's your fault, not my fault. Okay. How do you manage the difficult traveling with the new grip? Like I said, like the time zones, even meals in the white time. Different types of food, different countries. Um, allowed to take different things into different countries. So you've got to take meals from one. Why? How do you deal with all that? So. Yeah, so off season, this is the worst I'll look. <laughs> because of, well, I say it because you have to consider the fact that I travel a lot and the food is very difficult to, to pack. Because uh, in certain countries, they're like, oh, you have to empty out your bag and then you your land. And then sometimes, like the other day, we came from California to, to Nova. Thinking, okay, we're going to be good bodybuilders today. We're going to buy 10 meals a piece and we're just going to eat on the plane and it's that. Man, you realize like after the first meal we're like this? That food spoiled or close to it. So last thing I want to do is get sick. So to answer your question, you also have to keep in mind like what I'm saying in certain places, I usually have my schedule up to a year out. Maybe sometimes a year and a half I kind of know where I'm going to be. Call the hotel. And ask them about a certain menu you can buy. You have to ask questions. And uh, but during a prep, I normally don't travel as much. If I do, I usually have some type of meal prep service, uh, customized meals. I'm usually gone for maybe three, four days tops to go visit my trainer in California, Honey Ramba. And then um, usually I try also to not get too far out of shape because with my travel schedule. I don't have a big appetite, so like I said, this is the worst I get. Um, and luckily for me, I'm not a big eater, because I've eaten everything, you know. So it's it's tough. You just have to prioritize everything. How long is your prep? I say 15 weeks, but I could do it in nine. You know, I probably could. If I was just trying to like, okay, you know, let's just go do it, then yeah, I think maybe nine, maybe ten. But for, for the Olympia, it's almost like you want to give yourself that much more time that if something goes wrong, you can fix it. So if I get injured, I get injured every year, I just don't tell you guys. Something happens. Um, this is no different than any other athlete. You know, a rugby player or a cricket player, or something, they all get injured. You know? Why would a bodybuilder get injured? They're not losing weights all the time. You know? You're getting, something bad can happen. So you have to train around and stuff. So usually I use the 15 weeks to kind of help with that. Uh, even about two weeks out, I'm already ready to go. Two weeks out, I'm kind of just trying to figure out, well, which version of myself do I try to give to the, the fans? Because 
sometimes you can't look the same all the time. So you try to figure it out. I'm sorry? It's unfortunately for me, I mean, when I won the Olympia, a lot of people are like, oh my god, this is like one of the best seats of all time, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, although that sounds great, and that's really nice for someone to say that, how do you beat that? So that's what sucks to be being a champion in this type of sport. If you are playing a, uh, a football match or something like that, that's easy because you just have to beat the opposition. You can beat them by a point. You can beat them by a ton of points, you know, every year. The bottom line is like, how do you say, well, I was perfect this year, and then beat that? It sometimes takes a couple of years just to beat that last person. So that's where it becomes like, oh man, you know. And then the internet's crazy. So people are like, oh, he wasn't as good as last year. This man's like, but in bodybuilding, you're always good as you stay next year. So you kind of, for me, I have to remind myself of that. But my personal best, I think, was 2013. I feel like, you know, I pretty much walked. I literally walked out on stage knowing that I was going to win. It was one of those good moments, especially when I. They called me out for a second time and they told me to go back. And I was like, serious? Because I kind of knew what that meant. The crowd was kind of like, wait a minute, did we just witness this? Because normally in bodybuilding you have a lot of comparisons and stuff, especially at the Olympia. But for that occasion, I looked good enough to where they were just like, well, we already compared him. This is just a fight for second and third. So that's what I go after. Because uh, Ronnie Coleman actually said something cool to me that night that Reminded me why 2013 was the best year. He said, he said man, you were the ass so bad, you should have had a first, second, and third. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> he said, don't tell anybody I told you that. I was like, you know, I'm going to tell everybody. <laughs> so, yeah. So what's your favorite team meeting? Probably Italian or sushi. Why not? Huh? You think up? I used to. I used to eat candy a lot. <laughs> I've seen a lot of candy. You did like today. Of, yeah, a lot of ice cream, stuff like that. But once you start doing prep, you cannot do that anymore. And you also can't figure like, oh, well, I've got genetics and I can just get away with this and then just, you know, I'll just diet, you know, I'll just do more cardio. It's like, why you put yourself through that stress? Just do it. Treat yourself as if you had no genetics at all. And just work your ass off. And then see what happens. And usually that helps. And then when the show is over, as my career has gone on, I'll order everything that I've been creating, but only think off of each one just a little bit. And then for some reason, if you do that, you can have like 10 different meals in front of you. And then if you literally just think off a little bit, register something in your brain like, okay, I'm satisfied. You know, it's kind of like some people will go, like in college I used to go out drinking a lot, you know, drinking alcohol and stuff. And then like, we get there late, so we figure like, oh yeah, you know, we gotta count, 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 count. You know, and if, if you're like, oh man, I get four shots, I haven't gotten drunk yet. You know, what we didn't realize is that if we kept going, that four turns into 10, and then, and then time goes on, and then you're like, you know, you're doing what I call the Michael Jackson thriller. You guys know the thriller? <laughs> the thriller dance? Yeah, yeah. When you're drunk? <laughs> so it's kind of like that with eating bad, is that sometimes it doesn't register fast enough, so we just keep eating. Next you know, we don't wipe the whole groceries out in the house, and we ate a bunch of junk, so you can't really do that. So maybe sometimes like eat slower and then it'll register and be like, okay, I don't really need all that. And a lot of the times like people see me eating, they'll be like, well, how did you look like that? Because I'll eat something and be like, okay, I had enough of this to get rid of it. Yeah. Do you think you'll use free what? I'm sorry. What do you need to wear on your face like yeah, what do you need to wear? Arms? Arms? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'd probably say quad sweep from the rear um, because of my pictures. Sometimes if, if I'm not full enough, they don't have as much uh, swing to them. For me, it's more of a water issue 
and do my cool and you always come in ready at the show. It's like, like I know what I look like probably like three weeks out, and I kind of like to duplicate that on stage. And I think sometimes I over um, dehydrate myself. My muscles kind of like they they jump at, they jump out. They're like more pronounced because they need so when you reduce a lot of water, sometimes the volumization will be. But I would say if I have more muscle, then it won't really matter. Uh, so I'd probably say quad sweep is huge, especially hamstrings as well. Hamstrings for me is huge because it helps out with, you know, with my knees. And I'm 35 now, I'm not 20 years old, you know, doing squats, so it's, it's a lot harder. And we all usually don't train things behind us that we can't see as hard as we can in front. I mean, everybody in here, I'm sure, does quads first, you know, it's like, and then hamstring, if we get the hamstring, like, oh, you know, I'll just rush through this, I gotta go home. So I'll use that as, yeah, I'll do that. And I actually want to train calves more this year. I know they don't train them. So I'll train calves a lot, legs, and then, I mean, really everything with back and legs, yeah, back and legs. During your last Mr. Olympia, did you ever have any doubt at any point during the competition that you were going to lose to Kai? No. Um, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Simon has a... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. don't be sorry. It's a, it's a, it's a question. Yeah. It's just an honest question. You know, I respect Kai Green. You know, he has a lot of talent and stuff. You know, it took us a lot of hard work together um, for that stage. Um, I just kept the feeling like, because of how he was acting all week, that this was kind of more out of desperation. And when I and when I saw people act like this when I played basketball, I knew that there's something, there was a, uh, as they say, cheek in the armor. You know, there's something wrong. When he committed to himself being bigger by 40 pounds or whatever, I thought, that doesn't really mean you're better. You were probably more competitive when you were lighter than weight. But in this sport, once you get to a certain size, it's kind of like, like when Lonnie Coleman started competing past 280 pounds, it's kind of hard for him to go back to 250 when he first won his first Olympic. Because you have to diet off some type of muscle and this and that. Uh, but for him, we were backstage, and I, I haven't told anyone this story, so um, I'm sure it's going to get gone, ain't it? <laughs> but we were, we were backstage, I saw him, and I was like, wow, this, you know, it looks good. You know, I've seen him doing times like, wow, okay. But I noticed that he wasn't on like 100%, and I knew I wasn't on 100%. So I thought, okay, how is this going to play out? Is my 80, 85% is going to be his? And uh, maybe he gets better as the contest goes. So I had to kind of go through the call outs and this and that. And I remember just watching him, and I'm kind of just doing one of these, and I see him, and I start seeing like layer of water, like just go with like in the, from the stomach all down the boots and this and that. Because you got to understand, like, it's under a lot of stress. But we're on that stage, it's not like lights like this. It's like a thousand. So it's very, very hot. And now that we have like all those TV screens, those have power sources behind them. All LED screens have power sources behind them to shine that bright. So it's so hot. And you're already behind here for two days. And you're just, I mean, you're already irritable and everything. So it just, it's a bad condition. So I started seeing it and I was like, okay, he's fatigued. Maybe he's fatigued because mentally he's, you know, he's kind of having a fit, you know, at the, the press conference. So he's, you know, so he was already pissed off. And that kind of transferred into Friday night. So I kind of knew right there. I was like, there's really nothing to be worried about. And that's why, if you saw, like, I was just like, well, this is a guy that's being prevented by me to win the show. So I just have to stand my ground and just be like, whatever. It's just a hurdle. I have no problem going over. And I did, and uh, you know he'll be back. You know, for some reason the predators always come back. You know, <laughs> like in the Arnold movie, right? Yeah. But Arnold killed them, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a lot of that like in the sport, or you find like getting along really well with each other? There's never going to be another relationship that you guys see with Jay and I again. I don't think so. that that that's probably like the best. Um. To answer your question, there is camaraderie. I mean, just last, just a few days ago, we saw Sean Roden and Trent McMillan training with each other. I 
saw a branch one doing the cardio, I walked right over to him, had a conversation. I figured, oh, I'll, go, I'll go chat him up a little bit because I know how it feels when you're doing cardio. You kind of need someone to talk to for, you know, the good five, ten minutes to keep your mind off of you. So we're just chatting about life and this and that. Um, he's actually one of my favorite bodybuilders. Um, he, he's a, he's a very, I don't want to say mysterious, but he is probably not what you think. You know, so, yeah, I mean, I get along with, I probably, I think I get along with everybody. It's, you know, Kai and I just, we just tolerate each other at the moment. Yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, I don't know out here with sport, but like in the States, you have the Boston Red Sox, and you have the New York Yankees. And they hate each other. And the fans hate each other. You know, for life, right? But I look at us kind of the same. It's just, well, it's, it's you guys. Yeah. Really. <laughs> it's the fans online that talk that the most that we're really not saying anything. So with he and I, that's one thing, but everybody else, I think we're all pretty good. I mean, we can all be in the same room. I don't, we, you'll probably never see two bodybuilders ever fight. Fight about what? Well, maybe over the last piece of chicken. <laughs> that's about it. Yeah. But I think, Going back to T and I, like I think our relationship will be much different once we're both retired. I think someone is probably going to be smart enough to sit us both down in a room and kind of go through those years. Hopefully, those years are mean still win. <laughs> but talking about still on the mental aspect as to how we needed each other, but I actually feel like he and I kind of need each other, even though we don't want to. I'll admit it. I need him just as much as he probably needs me. I need the rest of the guys too because it elevates the level of score. See, I'm not saying, oh, I hope he retires because it'll be easier for me. It's like, no, nah, man, like, you have a lot of fans, you know? So there's probably one or two of you guys in here. <laughs> but, but, I think our story, like I said, years from now will be quite interesting. Because we did raise the level of the game. I mean, we really did. This, I just hope that we can ultimately keep it professional on stage. Because I think of, I think it was last year was one of those moments where people wanted to see something, and then when it was starting to go there, people were like, no, 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 no. And they're texting me like on Twitter and Facebook like, Phil, why are you antagonizing my? I'm like, guys, like I didn't do it. Well, this is more of you guys talking a bunch of snacks, so it's like, just calm down, the physique's tough, we all have fun, and snack. What do you got with 2020? What do you say you want to know at? What's your old thing? 2020? Yeah, what do I want to do? Politics like Kai, or? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, you know, currently, um, we have gifted nutrition, so we're, Steadily at work. That's pretty much why I even came to Australia and then going to India and been on tour. That for me will be my bait. Um, a lot of guys, you know, start nutrition companies and different business ventures after they're finished competing. For me, I'm doing it while I'm competing. Uh, I guess I'm just crazy like that and want to give myself something more to do and have a lot more stress. At the same time, it's establishing the fact that as a bodybuilder, you can be a businessman, you can do other things. You're not just one dimensional. In 2020, I don't know. I, I, as far as politics, probably not. I would love, and I, and I, I still do stuff with kids. I, I do a charity event for autism in, in America. I'd like to do more stuff with that as the years go, go on. I, I'm sure there's going to be somewhere where I'm going to be teaching. I probably, I do know I want to start uh, coaching though. Not just with this, but like with basketball and, and track and field, because I was really good at that um, as, at one point. And, and really just life coaching. I, I like hearing people's stories and stuff and, and trying to help them navigate where they want to go. And that's just my way of giving back. Uh, if I do the work and this and that, I'll have enough resources to be able to take time away and do seminars around the world and, and have fun. But yeah, no politics. I mean, yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty wicked to have someone go through your entire life. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna find things that 
you've already done and did stupid stuff and oh, all don't even look for it now, like. Yeah, I mean, I'm under a microscope like crazy, but you know what I mean? It is what it is, right? It, I can't, I can't satisfy everyone, and that's very, very hard. If you try to satisfy everybody, man, good luck, because even for me, I can, if I was doing this for those type of people, I really wouldn't have any hair. I can grow it, so. <laughs> But it's because of the fact that there would be nothing left for me, man. Like, I, you know, you have, no. They, 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 the same people that said I would never turn pro are the same people that still say I won't win number five. So I always ask, in my mind, when I read this on the internet, I ask myself, I wonder what they're doing. And I don't really have to ask it more than once because I figure they're probably doing the same thing, still saying the same stuff. That's a level of insanity, if you ask me. They should be focused on something better for themselves because if they had something bigger than this, they would be focused on something pretty awesome. So I always wonder, I'm like, you know, I, my goals must be awesome if someone is paying attention to me like that. So with the media, I don't want to give them certain types of ammunition. You can't really hide it either. Someone can take what I'm saying here and twist it around and snap. I just have to realize that the more people I can physically touch and, and meet, even through social media, but actually in these moments, now those are the relationships I'll, I'll remember. Those are the ones I really care about. I can't really care about somebody that doesn't really have a face, that just wants to be negative. But, you know, my, my sister actually, I have a stepsister that actually worked in, um, in, in politics. You know, she's helped people run for governor, senator, and a lot of people want her to run for mayor, and I'm like, she's like, I ask her, I go, I go, your name is Kikora, I go, Kiki, uh, why, like, why haven't you ran? She's like, I don't need to do any of my business, because it's very, very nasty, so. Maybe there's another thing for me, I, I think I'd like to be on a, a presidential board of health and fitness. I saw Arnold Schwarzenegger when I was a kid, he was riding a bicycle with, with the president, George Bush, and he was involved in getting kids in shape and, and going to schools and making sure they had healthy eating programs and stuff because a lot of people were poor and they couldn't afford lunch. Stuff like that, to me, would be awesome because you can't really have a basketball player or American football player do this. you got to have some moves and muscles. Go up to these parents and go up to these kids and say, this is why you need to eat right. This is, this is why you train hard because you feel great and you look great. I'm sorry?